Make it snowy. Make it golden hour. Add snow. Add a cute bunny. Magic. Hello and welcome back to Data Science Castnet. In today's video, I thought we'd take a look at a wonderful new paper called Instruct Pix to Pix, Learning to Follow Image Editing Instructions. So this is the um, GitHub repository where they have released the code for this paper. And then I'll also link in the paper link and some demos where you can find the model and the uh, Gradio demo itself um, to try it out as well. Um, so what is this paper and this project talking about? Well, they're presenting a way to edit images with natural language instructions. That is the highlight of the paper. Given an image and an instruction for how to edit that image, our model performs the appropriate edit. So given an input image of some, some sunflowers and the instruction swap sunflowers with roses, it knows how to generate something that keeps everything else about that original image mostly intact, the style, the background, etc., um, but to perform the appropriate edit. So this is a really cool paper. It's based around the stable diffusion model, um, but they've augmented it and retrained it in a very interesting way. So I thought we'd take a quick look at the paper. We'll do some live demos of the model in action, and we'll talk a little bit more about how it works uh, and why I think it's so cool. So um, the paper doesn't actually have um, too many diagrams and things for how exactly this works. Um, so we'll start by looking at how they generated the data, which is covered extensively in the paper, and I think is probably the most interesting part. Um, and then we'll move into how does this actually work, like what does the inputs and outputs to the model look like and how is that different from the base model. Um, so for this type of training, they wanted to have a large data set of these kinds of image editing instructions. And of course, this would be kind of prohibitively expensive to create manually. You can imagine saying, okay, let's hire you know a thousand Photoshop artists 24 seven <laughs> to be um, taking an, uh, an input image and an edit instruction and trying to edit it. Plus, you'd have to have someone coming up with the editing instructions. Um, so instead, what they did is they used GPT-3, they used OpenAI's GPT-3 uh, model, and they fine-tuned it on a fairly small set of manually created captions um, with a caption and a new caption and an image pair. So here's an example. They wrote 700 of these. Uh, they grabbed some captions from the existing Lion dataset. Um, so you have Girl with the Horse at Sunset as the input caption. So they came up with, this is some human manually saying, change the background to a city, and then a new caption for that, go with a horse at sunset in front of a city. So now this is all text data so far, um, but we have the original caption, go with a horse at sunset, and we have the new caption, go with the horse at sunset in front of the city, and we have the edit instruction. Um, okay, so why does this help us? How can we go from this to synthetic data? Well, firstly, they fine tuned GPT-3 on these 700 examples, and use it to generate hundreds of thousands more examples like this. We have an original caption, a edit instruction for how to change the image, and then a new caption that accurately reflects that, that suggested edit. Um, and so now we have not just 700 uh, input and edited caption pairs, we have hundreds of thousands of those. Then they use some existing image editing methods that rely on, on um, diffusion models to generate these um, edited image pairs. Specifically, they use something called prompt to prompt, which I covered in the previous video on editing images with diffusion models, which I'll try and link below if I know how to do that. Um, okay, so all of the data for this model is actually created synthetically. They create two versions of an image, one with the original input caption and one with the edited caption. And they use this prompt to prompt technique to make sure that the important things that are um, changing do change, um, but the overall structure and semantics and everything of the image stays the same. Um, and they and prompt to prompt works by modifying the attention layers and doing some clever tricks while it's generating to, to achieve that. Um, so this is cool. This is completely synthetic data. Um, I think the input captions came from Lion, but the edit instructions, the edited captions, and then the input and edited images are all synthetic. And the great thing is on the GitHub page, they also link the data. So if you would like to try training on this data, you can go and find that online. They have a big um, massive data set that you can download seven gigs and explore. It's not actually amazing, but the crazy thing with this paper is that even though the, all the training data was synthetic and the quality is not necessarily amazing, um, for actual editing, it's just incredible. Um, okay, so then now they have this data, they have a very rich data set of the input image, the edit instruction, they have the captions if they need them, and then they have the final like desired target image. So how do you go from that to training a model to actually do these kinds of edits? 
Um, so maybe before we do that, let's look at a recap of how the normal stable diffusion works. So at the heart of stable diffusion is this thing called a unit. And the unit architecture, this is the actual core diffusion model. Its job is to look at a noisy version of the image and to produce a prediction for how to denoise that, or for what, what's the noise, what's the image, how do I split the two. Um, and it gets in as input that noisy image as well as the time step and the prompt. And so the noisy image would be our, our normal input. And these other additional inputs, we call them conditioning information. Right? The prompt is a hint like, oh, by the way, here's some extra information to help you make your prediction. And so if we see what that looks like at a sort of higher level, we have our noisy input here. Um, it's coming into the stable diffusion unit. Um, and that's making a prediction for what it thinks the denoised image looks like. It's not necessarily perfect, but it's its best guess. And at inference, we're going to look at this prediction. We're going to use it to take a small step in that direction, remove some of the noise. Then we'll get a new prediction, remove some of the noise, new prediction, and repeat this iteratively until we're left with a finished image that hopefully looks really beautiful. And one thing we should add, these are all in latent space, these images, rather than RGB images, but I'm just showing them here for simplicity. Um, okay, so that's the normal way of working. How is instruct picks to picks different? What does that input look like? Well, what they do is they feed in the original unedited image as extra conditioning information. So where before you might have you know a four channel input for the four um, channel latents, you now have two versions of that for eight channels total. Um, so they've augmented the unit here to take in instead of a four channel input, an eight channel input. Um, and so now the unit is still doing the same task. It's still denoising this image, but as a hint, it has the prompt and the time step and this additional conditioning information, which is the original image that we want to edit. Um, and so I think let's find the place in the paper where they talk about this. Um, for our task, the score network, which is represented with this symbol here, has two conditionings, the input image conditioning I and the text instruction conditioning T. And so the loss that they're going to minimize is this big scary equation, which is just the expected value for a range of inputs and conditioning images and conditioning texts, the difference between the model's prediction on the right here and the actual noise on the left. So it looks a big scary equation, but it's the same training objective as normal. It's just that the model to make its prediction takes in the noisy input, the time step, and both of our conditionings. One, the um, conditioning image, and to the conditioning text. Um, so yeah, that's that's the training regime. They train it on all of these synthetic image pairs. Um, and then how does it work? Well, now at inference time, what we can do is we can use this and we can adjust the strength for how much we pay attention to the image and the text. This is based on something called classify free guidance, um, but they can they extend that to have do it with two conditionings. So we can choose to say, okay, let's make a prediction without either the text or the image as this additional conditioning. So no extra hints. Then let's make a prediction with just the image as additional conditioning. Let's make one with just the text. And then we can kind of combine those three predictions according to our relative strengths for what we'd like. Um, so the results are truly phenomenal. We'll, like I said, do some live demo just now. Um, but showing here the um, input image of the famous Beatles photo, but now with Make It Hong Kong, Make It Manhattan, Make It Prague, Make It Underwater, um, truly incredible results. And they do lots of lovely edits. Um, let's find here the, um, yeah, uh, everyone likes to adjust classic paintings, um, pretty classic. So you can see here the input image and then an, a large number of edits, all of which keep the overall structure quite well, um, but they're changing things like the style or the color um, changing the time of day is pretty incredible. Um, it's a really, really powerful and potent demo um, to see how you can edit images with this. So I think that's all of the paper reading we're going to do. If you have questions on some of the more technical details, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I'll also link the paper so you can go and check that out. I think now let's look at this and try it out for ourselves. So there's a few ways you can try this out. One is via the free Hugging Face space. So I've loaded here a photo of the Mona Lisa. And we're going to make it a photograph and see what we can do in the um, same uh, idea as the original paper. Let's just deface some priceless works of art to show how cool our model is. I really enjoy this trend of using the classic images as inputs just because it's a quirky little bit of fun. And while we wait for that to process, um, maybe we can go through, oh, there we go. Uh, so this looks like it's turned it into an old school like black and white photograph. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so let's see if we can show a 
um, a few different edits. And so what I'm going to do is switch over to um, my favorite implementation of something like this, um, which is the Playground AI uh, edit function. So um, I've got here an image that I've generated, and I can hit edit. And just like before, we can type in a prompt. So I'm going to say make it nighttime. Um, and we can hit generate to see that. Now here they've exposed um, this kind of edit instruction strength, which is basically the same thing as the um, image strength versus the text uh, conditioning strength in the paper. Um, so you can play around with that to get the effects that you want. Um, that looks pretty cool. And yeah, you can continue to edit, um, make it stormy or turn it into painting, make it an oil painting of a stormy sea. Um, and yeah, pretty fun to play around with. Um, but one of the things I wanted to highlight as well is um, yeah, what kinds of edits this enables versus what it doesn't. There we go, beautiful painting. Um, so this is really great when you want to keep the exact kind of semantics and just change maybe a style or a color. Um, and so as another example of that, let's maybe try and edit this um, VW Beetle and change the color of the beetle. Um, make the car blue. Um, and I'll show one more neat feature, which is why I, I kind of prefer this interface over the others around at the moment. Um, but while we do this as well, let's appreciate this is kind of magic, right? This is the, the Photoshop that we all dreamed of. Um, okay, but you can see the edits are not perfect. So the structure is kept the same, the color has changed as we like, but it's also affected the rest of the image. Uh, and so there's this final little trick that these guys have, which is that you can mask out a part of the image that you'd like to edit. And it doesn't have to be very precise. This is just going to go and do some things behind the scenes so that the um, Instruct Picks to Picks is limited in terms of where it can make changes. Um, and so yeah, we'll see how that works. And this kind of thing, this, this general approach of taking a model and um, an existing pre-trained model like Stable Diffusion or in the text domain like GPT-3 and fine tuning it on this kind of human instruction or at least synthetic instruction data, um, I think is really powerful. The fact that we can just type in, you know, make it a painting, give her cool sunglasses, m make it winter time instead of summertime, uh, seems like it's a, a really powerful new way to interact with computers. And you can imagine this being um, the way we create things in the future. Uh, I've got some music, make it more upbeat. I've got some text, make it more formal. Uh, I've got some image edited in this very specific way. So I think it's a really, really powerful um, idea. And I really enjoy the fact that there's these papers coming out that are creating ways to do this and thinking about how to bootstrap that data. Uh, and this is something that's only going to get better. If you look at the example data that they trained on, you know, a few more papers down the line, we'll have either better synthetic data sets or data sets that have been collected by folks who are um, allowing, you know, tens of thousands of users to make hundreds of edits a day. Um, you'll see that these just get better and better and better. And I'm really excited because this is not the kind of type in some text and get a magic picture back. Um, text to image cool demo. This is like real practical and fun. Um, I'd like to edit an existing image or I'd like to do something very specific to some photo that I've taken. Um, yeah, so the future is pretty great. I hope you've enjoyed this brief investigation of um, Instruct Picks to Picks and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.